What's a pulley? And what's it made up of? It was made to lift heavy objects from the ground to above. To define a pulley, it's a wheel and an axle. Designed to support movement and weight moving objects with no hassle. These are parts of the fixed pulley, the simplest of them all. It is fixed to one spot on a floor, ceiling, or a wall. This is the wheel, it spins freely on its axle here. And the rope moves back and forth on the groove on the wheel there. When the effort is forced down with the rope that is attached to the wheel, which now spins and lifts the load in this act. In a fixed pulley, the effort and the load must be at least than the fixed pulley you see. The pulley itself is attached to the weight of the load as the effort moves the rope while the rope's attached as shown. The third pulley is complex. It's called the compound pulley. It combines the fixed and the movable pulleys you see. Here's the rope. It's attached to the board above like so. Running through the first pulley that's attached to the weight of the load. The rope then moves up through Check out the new KLT Geography channel with new videos every Saturday. We're on a mission to Mars with ULA. United Launch Alliance is making launches to Ray. We're on a mission to Mars with ULA. Bringing the Perseverance rover to Mars in 2020. Before we launch, we need to plan in advance. If we don't time this right, we'll be launching by chance. The Earth and Mars are moving on different lines. So we have to wait for window when Mars is close to Earth in time. When we launch we need to create the right trajectory and aim at a point in space where Mars will be seven months from July you see. If we launch between July 20th and August 11th it sets us forth to reach Mars in seven months when it's closest to Earth. We're on the launch pad waiting to leave. We'll take off in T minus six, five, four, three, two, one, lift off. The Atlas V is heading to space to orbit Earth to send the Perseverance to Mars to propel our knowledge forth. I'm the Atlas V rocket, let me show you my parts. I have four solid rocket boosters, I'd say that's a good start. My RD-180 engine has a lot of thrust and the Atlas booster on this mission is a must. I have two five and there's a left and a right The house is my center Which is crucial for this flight The center brings the sky crane and rover into orbit Then shoots it to Mars to discover more about its planet Shortly after liftoff, the Atlas rocket begins to pitch For the proper flight path while minimizing the pressure on it The SRBs are released at 1 minute 49 seconds Once all SRBs are released then they are done at 4 minutes 22 seconds propellant levels deplete and the main engine shuts down this part of my mission is complete 6 seconds later the atlas centaur separation activates this is the time to release the booster stage 10 seconds later centaur's first engine burn begins sending the centaur into circular orbit on its ascent at 11 minutes cut off of centaur's main engine occurs the centaur will now start to coast but don't be concerned the center main engine is
is restarted for the second enough to burns providing the thrust for center to escape Earth's orbit in turn seven minutes later the second cutoff of the main engine happens center goes for five minutes for the spacecraft separation at 56 minutes center releases perseverance with power into hyperbolic orbit at 26,000 miles per hour seven months later the gravity on mars will capture the spacecraft you see and hold on to it until the sky crane is set to release the sky crane is used for entry descent and landing of the rover on mars's surface this job is so demanding there's seven minutes to get from mars's atmosphere to its surface going from 13,000 miles per hour to zero without a miss when the spacecraft is released after entering the atmosphere its parachute deploys to slow the sky crane that's shown here the parachute releases and the sky crane boosters ignite it hovers the rover above Mars's surface at the right height. The crane lowers the rover with cables above Mars's surface, then releases the rover safely on its wheels with bliss. NASA's Perseverance rover has two main objectives, you see, to find signs of life and sample materials they be. This is the first part of a return mission to Earth, with ULA exploring the known universe. We're on a mission to Mars. With ULA United Launch Alliance is making launches to Ray. We're on a mission to Mars with ULA bringing the Perseverance rover to Mars in 2020. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. What's the Eiffel Tower? It's a wrought iron lattice tower in Paris, France. When you visit me, take the elevator to the top floor if you have the chance. The Eiffel Tower was the main exhibit at the World's Fair in 1889. Built to commemorate the centennial of the French Revolution at that time. I was named after this engineer, Gustave Eiffel, this man right here. His company designed and built the tower in 1887, yeah, that's the year. It was built to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. It was finished in 1889 for the entrance of the World's Fair Institution. I'm 1,063 feet tall from my base to my antenna tip. Almost 7 million people visit me annually. Come take the trip. My official color is Eiffel Tower Brown. I'm painted every seven years with 60 tons of paint so my raw iron doesn't rust. That is the fear. The weight of my metal frame is roughly 7,300 tons of fun. Add the weight of my lift shots and antenna and I'm 10,100 tons. I'm located in Champs-Dimas, Paris, France. Don't you know? After this chorus plays out, I'll have more to show. What's the Eiffel Tower? It's a wrought iron lattice tower in Paris, France. When you visit me, take the elevator to the top floor if you have the chance. The Eiffel Tower was the main exhibit at the World's Fair in 1889. Built to commemorate the centennial of the French Revolution at that time. Did you know Gustave Eiffel was the second designer you see for the internal structural elements of the Statue of Liberty. Gustav Eiffel built an office at the top of the Eiffel Tower where he entertained guests like Thomas Edison and other people of great power. Did you know the Eiffel Tower moves when the wind is bad enough and the sun can expand and contract its iron up to seven inches but it's tough. Below my cell pillar there is a military bunker but it's kept secret to the public to keep the visits to a shorter number. I have a small post office located on my first floor, you should know. If you send a postcard, it will be delivered with a unique postmark, it will show. Come visit me, I am the Eiffel Tower in France. Please sing this chorus with me as I do my dance. What's the Eiffel Tower? It's a wrought iron lattice tower in Paris, France. When you visit me, take the elevator to the top floor if you have the chance. The Eiffel Tower was the main exhibit at the World's Fair in 1889. Built to commemorate the centennial of the French Revolution at that time. Check out the new KLT Geography channel with new videos every Saturday. 
This is a solar expedition on renewable energy We'll see how solar panel cells produce free electricity Our sun's a nuclear reactor shooting photons at us for free Let's harness this power through silicon into batteries What is solar power? It's the conversion of energy From our sunlight into electricity Our sun's a natural nuclear reactor you should know It's the most abundant energy resource on earth I'll show Now what's a photon? They're light particles produced by the sun They're made by nuclear fusion shot into space in all directions It takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds for a photon to run before it reaches our earth from the surface of our sun Photons are made of electromagnetic radiation they're tiny packets of energy I convert into electricity for fun I'm a photovoltaic cell A solar cell you see I'm like an electrical leaf I use the sun to produce energy Solar panels are made up of me Small solar cells These cells are made from silicon Of this I will tell Silicon is a semiconductor For what it is worth And one of the most abundant elements On the planet earth In a solar cell there are three layers shown right here I will tell you about each layer as they appear The thin top layer does contain silicon You should know And a tiny amount of an element called phosphorus I show the phosphorus has more electrons than the silicon does That means there are more electrons making this area more conductive This layer with the phosphorus gives electrons more room to roam Which makes it negatively charged so it's called the anti as shown. The bottom layer contains silicon and an element called boron which has fewer electrons than the surrounding silicon. Because of the fewer electrons this layer is positively charged that's why it's called the p-type layer as shown at large. My middle layer is called the p-n junction. Soon we'll see what happens when photons hit me from the sun. Silicon atoms are connected to its neighbor by four strong bonds. This keeps the electrons Electrons in place in which I'm not so fond When a photon shoots into a solar cell with enough energy It can knock off an electron from its bond Leaving a hole you see The negatively charged electron and positively charged hole Are now free to roam around But there's only one way each can go Because of the electrical field in the PN junction The electrons drawn to the N type And the hole is drawn to the P type They run the mobile electrons are collected by metal strips at the top of the solar cell From there they flow to the external circuit To power a light bulb I tell They flow through and return to the conductive Aluminum sheet on my back Then they return from where they came from With no waste, that's a fact A single solar panel has many solar cells To create more energy in a small space To keep your home running well When too much energy is produced It gets sent back to the electrical grid To help produce more electricity For some other kid The sun produces uses more energy each hour than we will ever need there's so many ways that we can create renewable energy this is a solar expedition on renewable energy we'll see how solar panel cells produce free electricity our sun's a nuclear reactor shooting photons at us for free let's harness this power through silicon into batteries Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. This is a lever. It's a simple machine made of a fulcrum and a rigid beam. The lever was first brought forth into 60 BCE by Archimedes, the Greek mathematician. That's who you see. This simple But what does that mean? First, let's look at the two parts of the lever that will be told. The effort input force and the output force, which is the load. These two are applied to either end of the beam, just like this, which balances on the fulcrum. The point in which the beam pivots. When an effort is applied to one end of the lever, a load's applied at the other end of the lever. But how's this clever? This moves a mass up. Amount of force required to move this load north. Now, what are the mechanical advantages that?
that I'll lay in ply And has to do with how much force a simple machine does multiply The further the effort is away from the fulcrum The easier the load will move Here's the lever, classes for fun The first class lever to show the closer the fulcrum is to the load The less effort is needed to move the load a shorter distance You know the second class lever's loads located between the effort and fulcrum The closer the fulcrum's to the load the less effort's needed for the outcome The third class lever's effort's located between the load and the fulcrum If the fulcrum's closer to the load then the less effort's needed to move it some This is a lever It's a simple machine Made of a fulcrum and a rigid beam Check out the new KLT Geography channel with new videos every Saturday Up pyramids, yeah, we're all man made. We are architecture of new and ancient ancestry. We are pyramids of old and modern time. We will show you our location. Come visit us and climb. I'm the Memphis Pyramid in Memphis, Tennessee. Built of steel and concrete. Modern tools built me. I was built for sports and concerts in 1991. Now used as a bass pro shop for fishermen fun. Isaac Tigrep placed a crystal skull within me. When it was removed, bad luck struck. I'm known as the Tomb of Doom, you see. 322 feet high and 10th largest on this list. 535,000 square feet. Now you know this. I'm the Ben Pyramid in Dushur, Egypt, built way back when. I'm made of limestone blocks built by the hands of men. I was built for Pharaoh Sneferu in the 4th Dynasty. Yeah, I was constructed in 2600 BC at 344 feet tall. In the ninth largest you see here Come to Egypt to visit me I'll be here for years I'm the Red Pyramid Located in Giza, Egypt Made of red limestone My hue is why I was called this Also built for Pharaoh Sneferu In the 4th Dynasty It ranged from 2613 to 2589 BC At 345 feet tall I'm smooth sided, not stepped I hope you come to explore me In Egypt this is the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada on the Strip Finished in 1993, built with modern tools, I'm hip I have over 4,400 rooms that you can comfortably stay in I was built to entertain some people, lose some people win 350 feet tall, I'm made of glass and steel If you come to Vegas, come see me, I have curb appeal The Pyramid of Cafe, he's Egypt's my location Made of huge limestone blocks built by the hands of men built for the tomb of the great pharaoh Khafre you know the second largest and second tallest pyramid of Giza I show I'm 448 feet tall which puts me fifth on this list come visit if you can thanks for learning all this I'm the great pyramid of Giza Giza Egypt's where you'll find me I'm the oldest and the largest pyramid of the three Egyptologists believe I was built as a tomb for the 4th Dynasty Egyptian Pharaoh Khufu I was 481 feet before erosion occurred at all But since that happened now I'm 455 feet tall The Transamerica Pyramid in San Francisco, California Built with concrete, glass and steel I'm strong I tell ya My shape was built for environmental practicality To let natural light and airflow reach the San Francisco streets at 853 feet tall, I'm 7th tallest here, you know, but the second tallest building in San Francisco. Al Faisalia Center in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, built with steel and concrete, this I will share with you. I was the first skyscraper built in Saudi Arabia, you know, there are many taller than me now, come visit me though. I'm 876 feet tall, if measured to my tip, I am considered a pyramid. And I'm 8th on this list I'm called the Shard I'm located in London, UK I have 11,000 glass panels Come here and stay I'm 1,016 feet tall And take a pyramid shape I'm the tallest building in the UK I like to skyscrape 
Leung Hotel in Pyongyang, North Korea. The world's tallest unoccupied building, I will show ya. I'm considered the tallest modern pyramid of all at 1,082.7 feet tall. We are pyramids. Yeah, we're all man-made. We are architecture of new and ancient ancestry. We are pyramids of old and modern time. We will show you our location. Come visit us and climb. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. We're the world's tallest buildings Here to tell you about ourselves The views from our tops are quite chilling In the world's tallest buildings We celebrate the architects who created us And the people we bring I'm China Sun, the tallest building in Beijing That is in China, in case you were wondering At a height of 1731 feet tall I was built by the CITIC, as I recall 4.7 million square feet and 109 floors within me I was completed in the year of 2018 Tianjin CTF Finance Center is my name The second tallest building in Tianjin, China That's my fame My height is 1739 feet An impressive size And I'm owned by Chow Tai Fook The Enterprise Over 2.7 million square feet And 97 floors inside me I was completed in the year of 2019 Guangzhou CTF Finance Center is located in Guangzhou, China. We hope you enter. Also 1,739 feet tall. Also owned by Chow Tai Fook Enterprises, that's not all. I'm 5.4 million square feet and 111 floors completed in 2016 and I am adored. I am one World Trade Center and located in the state of New York in the USA I've been. I'm 1,792 feet from the ground to my tip. Owned by New York and New Jersey Port Authority. Now this, I'm 3.5 million square feet and 94 floors as seen. And I was completed in the year of 2014. I'm Latte World Tower, it's nice to meet ya. I am located in Seoul, South Korea. I'm 1,821 feet in height, owned by Latte Property and Development, that's right. At 3.2 million square feet and 123 floors, completed in 2016, come visit me on tour. Golden Finance, 117 Tower. Located in Tianjin, China and full of power 1957 feet tall, you know Golden properties, holdings, develop me though You'll find 4 million square feet and 117 stories here My completion should be in 2020, the year I'm the Pingyang Finance Center There's nothing finer Located in Shenzhen within China it's 1966 feet from the ground to my tip Pingyang Group owns me, now you all know this 4.9 million square feet and 115 floors in lean I was completed in the year of 2017 Mecca Royal Hotel Clock Tower I will show ya Located in Mecca, Saudi Arabia I'm 1972 feet to my top And I'm governed I'll be here till I drop 21.5 million square feet and 120 floors in me Completed in 2011, I think that is plenty I'm known as the Shanghai Tower Tallest tower in Shanghai, China I hope I empower 2,073 feet from the sky to my cement I'm owned by Shanghai Tower Construction and Development Over 4 million square feet and 128 floors within Completed in 2014, where have you been? This is the Borsh Khalifa Located in Dubai In the United Arab Emirates That's where I climb high I'm 2,722 feet tall from the ground to tip Owned by Amar Properties, yet I'm still hip with a total built-up area of 5.6 million square feet 
and 163 floors, a size that can't be beat. Completed in 2009, I'm the tallest tower in the world to date. If you ever make it to Dubai, to see me would be great. We're the world's tallest buildings, here to tell you about ourselves. The views from our tops are quite chilling in the world's tallest buildings. We celebrate the architects who created us and the people we bring. Check out the new KLT Geography channel with new videos every Saturday. I am the statue of liberty. I'm on Liberty Island, come and visit me. I am the statue of liberty. I'm surrounded by the waters of New Jersey. In 1886, the statue of was gifted to the U.S. from France to celebrate their friendship across the sea. The statue represents the friendship these two countries endured during the American Revolution. I'm not sure if you've heard. In 1865, a Frenchman named Edouard de la Boule proposed the Statue of Liberty be built for the USA. Frederic Auguste Bartholdi was a French sculptor who designed the Statue of Liberty. Of this, I am sure. Work real hard. Power 
is the electric generator so it's charged The electricity is passed along to the friction motors all year long The friction motors move the wheels down the track Freight train rolling down the track Hear the wheels on the rail go clickety-clack do you want to learn how they run? Take a seat and have some fun. Watch the freight train rolling down the track. Check out the new KLT Geography channel with new videos every Saturday. What's a pulley? And what's it made up of? It was made to lift heavy objects from the ground to above. To define a pulley, it's a wheel and an axle. Designed to support movement and weight moving objects with no hassle. These are parts of the fixed pulley, the simplest of them all. It is fixed to one spot on a floor, ceiling, or a wall. This is the wheel, it spins freely on its axle here. And the Discover more about its planet. Shortly after liftoff, the Atlas 
rocket begins to pitch for the proper flight path while minimizing the pressure on it. The SRBs are released at 1 minute 49 seconds. Once all SRBs are released, then they are done. At 4 minutes 22 seconds, propellant levels deplete and the main engine shuts down. This part of my mission is complete. Six seconds later, the Atlas Centaur separation activates. This is the time to release the booster stage. Ten seconds later, Centaur's first engine burn begins, sending the Centaur into circular orbit on its ascent. At 11 minutes, cutoff of Centaur's main engine occurs. The Centaur will now start to coast, but don't be concerned. The Centaur main engine is restarted for the second of two burns, providing the thrust for Centaur to escape Earth's orbit in turn. Seven minutes later, the second cutoff of the main engine happens. Centaur goes for five minutes for the spacecraft separation. At 56 minutes, Centaur releases perseverance with power into hyperbolic orbit at 26,000 miles per hour. Seven months later, the gravity on Mars will capture the spacecraft you see and hold on to it until the sky crane is set to release. The sky crane is used for entry, descent, and landing of the rover on Mars' surface. This job is so demanding. There's seven minutes to get from Mars' atmosphere to its surface, going from 13,000 miles per hour to zero without a miss. When the spacecraft is released after entering the atmosphere, its parachute deploys to slow the sky crane that's shown here. The parachute releases and the sky crane boosters ignite. It hovers the rover above Mars' surface at the right height. The crane lowers the rover with cables above Mars' surface, then releases the rover safely on its wheels with bliss. NASA's Perseverance rover has two main objectives, you see, to find signs of life and sample materials they be. This is the first part of a return mission to Earth, with ULA exploring the known universe. We're on a mission to Mars with ULA, United Launch Alliance is making launch array. We're on a mission to Mars with ULA, bringing the Perseverance rover to Mars in 2020. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. What's the Eiffel Tower? It's a wrought iron lattice tower in Paris, France. When you visit me, take the elevator to the top floor if you have the chance. The Eiffel Tower was the main exhibit at the World's Fair in 1889. Built to commemorate the centennial of the French Revolution at that time. I was named after this engineer, Gustave Eiffel, this man right here. His company designed and built the tower in 1887, yeah, that's the year. It was built to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the French Revolution. It was finished in 1889 for the entrance of the World's Fair Institution. I'm 1,063 feet tall from my base to my antenna tip. Almost 7 million people visit me annually. Come take the trip. My official color is Eiffel Tower Brown. I'm painted every 7 years with 60 tons of paint so my raw iron doesn't rust. That is the fear. The weight of my metal frame is roughly 7,300 tons of fun. Add the weight of my lift shops and antenna and I'm 10,100 tons. I'm located in Champs-Dimas, Paris, France. Don't you know? After this chorus plays out, I'll, I'll have more to show. What's the Eiffel Tower? It's a wrought iron lattice tower in Paris, France. When you visit me, take the elevator to the top floor if you have the chance. The Eiffel Tower was the main exhibit at the World's Fair in 1889. Built to commemorate the centennial of the French Revolution at that time. Did you know Gustave Eiffel was the second designer you see for the internal structural elements of the Statue of Liberty. Gustav Feifel built an office at the top of the Eiffel Tower where he entertained guests like Thomas Edison and other people of great power. Did you know the Eiffel Tower moves when the wind is bad enough and the sun can expand and contract its iron up to seven inches but it's tough. Below my cell pillar there is a military bunker but it's kept secret to the public to keep the visits to a shorter 
number I have a small post office located on my first floor you should know if you send a postcard it will be delivered with a unique postmark it will show come visit me I am the Eiffel Tower in France please sing this course with me as I do my dance what's the Eiffel Tower it's a wrought iron lattice tower in Paris France when you visit me take the elevator to the top floor if you have the chance the Eiffel Tower was the main exhibit at the World's Fair in 1889 built to commemorate the centennial of the French Revolution at that time check out the new KLT Geography channel with new videos every Saturday This is a solar expedition on renewable energy We'll see how solar panel cells produce free electricity Our sun's a nuclear reactor shooting photons at us for free Let's harness this power through silicon into batteries What is solar power? It's the conversion of energy from our sunlight into electricity Our sun's a natural nuclear reactor you should know It's the most abundant energy resource on earth I'll show now what's a photon they're light particles produced by the Sun they're made by nuclear fusion shot in space in all directions it takes eight minutes and 20 seconds for a photon to run before it reaches our earth from the surface of our Sun photons are made of electromagnetic radiation they're tiny packets of energy I convert into electricity for fun on a photovoltaic cell a solar cell you see I'm like an electrical leaf I use the sun to produce energy Solar panels are made up of me Small solar cells These cells are made from silicon Of this I will tell Silicon is a semiconductor For what it is worth And one of the most abundant elements On the planet Earth In a solar cell there are three layers Shown right here I will tell you about each layer As they appear The thin top layer does contain silicon you should know and a tiny amount of an element called phosphorus I show the phosphorus has more electrons than the silicon does that means there are more electrons making this area more conductive this layer with the phosphorus gives electrons more room to roam which makes it negatively charged so it's called the n type as shown the bottom layer contains silicon and an element called boron which has fewer electrons than the surrounding silicon because of the fewer electrons, this layer's positively charged That's why it's called the P-type layer, as shown at large My middle layer's called the P-N junction Soon we'll see what happens when photons hit me from the sun Silicon atoms are connected to its neighbor by four strong bonds This keeps the electrons in place, in which I'm not so fond When a photon shoots into a solar cell with enough energy It can knock off an electron from its bond leaving a hole you see the negatively charged electron and positively charged hole are now free to roam around but there's only one way each can go because of the electrical field in the p-n junction the electrons drawn to the n-type and the hole is drawn to the p-type they run the mobile electrons are collected by metal strips at the top of the solar cell from there they flow to the external circuit to power a light bulb i tell they flow through and return to the conductive aluminum sheet on my back then they return from where they came from with no waste that's a fact a single solar panel has many solar cells to create more energy in a small space to keep your home running well when too much energy is produced it gets sent back to the electrical grid to help produce more electricity for some other kid the sun produces more energy each hour than we will ever need there's so many ways that we can create renewable energy this is a solar expedition on renewable energy we'll see how solar panel cells produce free electricity our sun's a nuclear reactor shooting photons at us for free let's harness this power through silicon into batteries shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. This is a lever. It's a simple machine made of a fulcrum and a ridge.
rigid beam. The lever was first brought forth into 60 BCE by Archimedes, the Greek mathematician. That's who you see. The simple machine is made of a rigid beam and a fulcrum, as I mentioned. But what does that mean? First, let's look at the two parts of the lever that will be told the effort input force and the output force, which is the which bounces on the fulcrum the point in which the beam pivots when an effort is applied to one end of the lever a load's applied at the other end of the lever but how's this clever this moves a mass upward due to torque towards the amount of force required to move this load north now one of the mechanical advantages that i'll imply and has to do with how much force a simple machine does multiply the further the Classes for fun. The first class lever to show the closer the fulcrum is to the load, the less effort is needed to move the load a shorter distance. You know, the second class lever's loads located between the effort and fulcrum. The closer the fulcrum's to the load, the less effort's needed for the outcome. The third class lever's effort's located between the load and the fulcrum. If the fulcrum's closer to the load, then the less effort's needed to move it some. This is a lever. It's a simple machine made of a fulcrum and a rigid beam. Check out the new KLT Geography channel with new videos every Saturday. We are pyramids. Yeah, we're all man-made. We are architecture of new and ancient ancestry. We are pyramids of old and modern time we will show you our location come visit us and climb i'm the memphis pyramid in memphis tennessee built of steel and concrete modern tools built me i was built for sports and concerts in 1991 now used as a bass pro shop for fishermen fun isaac tigret placed a crystal skull within me when it was removed bad luck struck i'm known as the tomb of doom you see 322 feet high and 10th largest on this list 535,000 square feet now you know this i'm the bent pyramid in Dushur, egypt built way back when i'm made of limestone blocks built by the hands of men i was built for pharaoh sneferu in the fourth dynasty yeah i was constructed in 2600 bc at 344 feet tall in the ninth largest you see here come to egypt to visit me i'll be here for years i'm the red pyramid located in giza egypt made of red limestone my hue is why i was called this also built for pharaoh sneferu in the fourth dynasty it ranged from 2613 to 2589 bc at 345 feet tall i'm smooth sided not stepped i hope you come to explore me in egypt this is the Luxor Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada on the Strip Finished in 1993, built with modern tools, I'm hip I have over 4,400 rooms that you can comfortably stay in I was built to entertain some people, lose some people win 350 feet tall, I'm made of glass and steel If you come to Vegas, come see me, I have curb appeal The Pyramid of Cafe, he's Egypt's my location Made of huge limestone blocks built by the hands of men built for the tomb of the great pharaoh Khafre you know the second largest and second tallest pyramid of Giza I show I'm 448 feet tall which puts me fifth on this list come visit if you can thanks for learning all this I'm the great pyramid of Giza Giza Egypt's where you'll find me I'm the oldest and the largest pyramid of the three Egyptologists believe I was built as a tomb for the 4th dynasty Egyptian Pharaoh Khufu. I was 481 feet before erosion occurred at all, but since that happened, now I'm 455 feet tall. The Transamerica Pyramid in San Francisco, California, built with concrete, glass, and steel. I'm strong, I tell ya. My shape was built for environmental practicality, to let natural light and airflow reach the San Francisco streets. At 853 feet tall, I'm 7th tallest here, you know, but the 2nd tallest. 
tallest building in San Francisco. Al Faisalia Center in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Built with steel and concrete, and this I will share with you. I was the first skyscraper built in Saudi Arabia, you know. There are many taller than me now, come visit me though. I'm 876 feet tall, if measured to my tip, I am considered a pyramid and I'm 8th on this list. I'm called the Shard, I'm located in London, UK. I have 11,000 glass panels, come here and stay. I'm 1,016 feet tall and take a pyramid shape. I'm the tallest building in the UK, I like to skyscrape. Ryong Hotel in Pyongyang, North Korea. The world's tallest unoccupied building, I will show ya. I'm considered the tallest modern pyramid of all at 1,082.7 feet tall. We are pyramids, yeah, we're all man made. We are architecture of new and ancient ancestry. We are pyramids. Of old and modern time, we will show you our location. Come visit us and climb. Shop our new store merch and get custom birthday videos with your favorite characters. We're the world's tallest buildings. Here to tell you about ourselves The views from our tops are quite chilling In the world's tallest buildings We celebrate the architects who created us And the people we bring I'm China Sun, the tallest building in Beijing That is in China, in case you were wondering At a height of 1731 feet tall I was built by the CITIC, as I recall 4.7 million square feet and 109 floors within me I was completed in the year of 2018 Tianjin CTF Finance Center is my name The second tallest building in Tianjin, China That's my fame My height is 1739 feet An impressive size and I'm owned by Chow Typhook The Enterprise Over 2.7 million square feet and 97 floors inside me I was completed in the year of 2019 Guangzhou CTF Finance Center is located in Guangzhou, China. We hope you enter. Also 1739 feet tall. Also owned by Chow Typhoon Enterprises, that's not all. I'm 5.4 million square feet and 111 floors completed in 2016 and I am adored. I am one World Trade Center and located in the state of New York. In the USA I've been I'm 1,792 feet from the ground to my tip Owned by New York and New Jersey Port Authority Now this I'm 3.5 million square feet And 94 floors I've seen And I was completed in the year of 2014 I'm Latte World Tower, it's nice to meet ya I am located in Seoul, South Korea I'm 1,821 feet in height Owned by Latte Property and development, that's right At 3.2 million square feet and 123 floors Completed in 2016, come visit me on tour Golden Finance, 117 Tower in Tianjin, China, and full of power. 1957 feet tall, you know. Golden properties, holdings, develop me though. You'll find 4 million square feet and 117 stories here. My completion should be in 2020, the year. I'm the Pingyang Finance Center. There's nothing finer. Located in Shenzhen, within China. It's 1966 feet from the ground to my tip Pingyang Group owns me, now you all know this 4.9 million square feet and 115 floors in lean I was completed in the year of 2017 Mecca Royal Hotel Clock Tower I will show ya Located in Mecca, Saudi Arabia I'm 1,972 feet to my top And I'm government owned I'll be here till I drop 21.5 million square feet and 120 floors in me Completed in 2011, I think that is plenty I'm known as the 
the Shanghai Tower, tallest tower in Shanghai, China. I hope I empower. 2,073 feet from the sky to my cement. I'm owned by Shanghai Tower Construction and Development. Over 4 million square feet and 128 floors within. Completed in 2014. Where have you been? This is the Burj Khalifa, located in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates. That's where I climb high. I'm 2,722 feet tall from the ground to tip. Owned by Amar Properties, yet I'm still hip. With a total built up area of 5.6 million square feet and 163 floors, a size that can't be beat. Completed in 2009, I'm the tallest tower in the world to date. If you ever make it to Dubai, to see me would be great. We're the world's tallest buildings. Here to tell you about ourselves, the views from our tops are quite chilling. In the world's tallest buildings, we celebrate the architects who created us and the people we bring. Check out the new KLT Geography channel with new videos every Saturday. I am the statue of liberty. I'm on Liberty Island, come and visit me. I am the statue of liberty. I'm surrounded by the waters of New Jersey. In 1886, a statue of liberty was gifted to the U.S. from France to celebrate their friendship across the sea. The statue represents the friendship these two countries endured during the American Revolution. I'm not sure if you've heard. A Frenchman named Edouard de la Boulay Proposed the Statue of Liberty be built for the USA Frédéric Auguste Bartholdi was a French sculptor Who designed the Statue of Liberty Of this I am sure Bartholdi chose Bedloe's Island as a site for the statue So every ship entering New York Harbor would see it, it's true Here's some facts about me that you might not have known I'm 305 feet 6 inches tall from foundation to the torch tip shell. I have a 35 foot waistline so I wear a big toga and I weigh 225 tons I wish I had a sofa. My torch was restored in 1986 with thin sheets of 24 karat gold yeah I think I'm kinda rich. My crown has seven rays one for each of the seven continents each 150 pounds and nine feet in length and they're dense. My face measures more than eight
Stoke the firebox until it's hot The fire heats the boiler like a kitchen pot The steam collects in the steam dome top Then it's passed to the piston box Then the rods move the wheels on the tracks on the rocks Freight train rolling down the track Hear the wheels on the rail go clickety-clack Do you want to learn how they run? Take a seat and have some fun Watch the freight train rolling down the track Diesel engine pistons work real hard Power is the electric generator so it's charged the electricity is passed along to the friction motors all year long. The friction motors move the wheels down the track. Freight train rolling down the track. Hear the wheels on the rail go clickety clack. Do you want to learn how they run? Take a seat and have some fun. Watch the freight train rolling down the track. channel with new videos every Saturday.